So my name is Stuart Myers, and I'm a professor at UC Davis in the veterinary school. I'm a veterinarian and a researcher, and I'm a fertility specialist. I'm boarded in American College of Theriogenologists, and have been doing a lot of research on sperm and sperm crop preservation and male fertility over the years. I'm here in St. Louis at the invitation of the Canine Health Foundation to talk about the work that I've done uh, that they very generously funded me to look at essentially establishing a set of normals for semen parameters in dogs that really has not existed very long. It's just not a well-known entity right now. So dogs in the canine reproduction world, things like sperm crop preservation and artificial insemination is really just coming to be accepted by, by the public. And so those things are on a very rapid growth phase right now. So we don't know very much about what normal semen is in dogs. And so the study that I'm talking about today, we did in collaboration with Guide Dogs for the Blind in San Rafael. And they have one of the biggest breeding facilities probably in the world for breeding purebred dogs. And so they have a essentially state-of-the-art breeding program run by a veterinarian who's a theriogenologist. And they made available to us 39 Labrador Retriever stud dogs in their facility that they were actively breeding. And so we were able to get fresh semen and frozen semen and chilled semen from every dog. And the beauty of this study that hasn't been done before is that they have complete fertility records on every stud dog. So some of the dogs are eight, nine, ten years old, but the majority of them are young dogs, three, four years old. In fact, the average is about four years old for the dogs. But what was interesting to us and what's interesting as a theriogenologist is we don't know what semen qualities translate into fertility. So just because a dog or any male has good semen sample, has high sperm motility and morphology, doesn't necessarily mean they're going to be fertile. Um, so we were able to work with a breed of dogs that has a very high fertility. They actually don't use dogs that don't have high fertility. Those dogs get timed out of the program if they don't have good fertility because they're really interested in production and large litter sizes and uh, healthy, healthy dogs. So we were able to look at traditional semen parameters such as sperm morphology, sperm motility that every veterinarian and every breeder looks at but we also have an array of new types of semen tests that would probably be pretty useful. And those are things like looking at uh, oxygen-free radical production and also um, sperm chromatin structure assay, which is looking at the ability of chromatin to denature. turns out that that's very highly correlated to fertility itself and not necessarily semen quality. We have had dogs and we've had horses that have fairly high good semen quality but very very low sperm chromatin integrity and that highly correlates to inherent fertility so it's it's uncommon for an animal with an abnormal sperm chromatin to be fertile so we're able to add a whole lot of new parameters into what i would call a, a spermogram and so then we can then correlate those different aspects of sperm uh, functionality to fertility. And so what was interesting is that we definitely saw differences in sperm quality between different ages of dogs, but we really didn't see any difference on fertility in this population of dogs. So the main conclusion is that we looked at almost 40 highly fertile, very high quality Labradors and really even though we saw some differences in their sperm quality, the dog's inherent fertility makes up for any problems that you might see with sperm quality. Like, for example, we saw a lot of differences in some of the older dogs, but because they have been selecting so long for successful dogs, successful studs that produce good litter sizes, good healthy litters, and dogs that actually get into the program at Guide Dogs, that the genetics of those dogs is so good that their fertility has been selected for. 
So we're already working with a population of dogs that's very highly fertile. What we're really learning is what is the normal variation in semen quality in a normal population of highly fertile studs. So that's really the strength of that study. Right now we're working with this particular breed because we don't want to make out-of-breed comparisons, but I think this will be relative to every breed of dog. Um, the, knowing what the general variation is amongst highly fertile normal dogs. Now we can look at the deviation from highly fertile normal semen quality. So you, you have to look at what is normal, understand the variation of normal, and then start to jump off and look at where you might have some problems. And then some of these problems are fixable problems that we can fix with semen extenders or uh, frequency of collection, antibiotics, a number of other things. So but I think in going forward, what we're trying to get a handle on is what actually is fertility. And there is, seems to be a certain inherent fertility in certain males that no matter what you do to their semen, you just need one sperm to fertilize one egg. And so, again, if you had a dog with very, very low numbers of sperm, he could be very fertile, but most in that situation are not fertile. So we don't really understand what what inherent fertility is. And we have to try to figure that out. The only way to know that is by doing these sorts of studies. Well, the most common type of thing is when you look at a dog that has not gotten females pregnant or is resulting in low litter sizes, they want to evaluate that dog. And now I think what we can do is look at that uh, semen from a number of different angles right now with four or five different tests that were not available, say, five years ago. So again, going back to our, our study with fertile dogs, we now have a feel for what those things do in fertile dogs. We know what the levels and the rates of normality are. Um, as we start looking at dogs with more abnormal fertility levels or semen quality or inability to freeze, and the, semen freezing is really a growing business now. But there's a number of studs in every species, in dogs in particular, that don't freeze well. So veterinarians are often asked about, well, why, why won't my dog freeze well? How come the fertility rate of frozen semen is so low? And I think in trying to understand some of the biochemistry and physiology of these cells will help us to understand and how to improve uh, crowd preservation for most studs.